good morning, good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching this. I'm Autumn Blossom and welcome back to the channel. So another week has come and gone and it has been a long and complicated uh, week and you'll see why throughout the video. When I started filming this video I did intend it to be a vlog but it seems that I didn't actually record enough for that to be the case, so here I am. Um, the video is going to be a mixed match of me now and, a me and some of me then, so let's get on with it. I started off the week going for a walk, we walked through this area that I know well, um, but it's also known for being damaged by fires, which obviously is not very good, but it keeps to a spooky theme and I didn't get much from it to be fair. I liked walking through it and you know it's nice and aesthetically to the theme for this video but as my story is based inside I can't really get much from the outside to bring in. There are places in my local area that are known to be haunted so we'll probably go I don't know, I'm thinking about going over there during the Halloween period, but yeah. After the walk, I basically just got straight to writing. It was nice to get out of the flat, like I said in the previous video, I needed to get out. And that's what I did, and it was nice, and it made me feel really refreshed to get back into writing, which is what I did as soon as I got home. I'll let past me take the reins for a bit. So, I've just spent about an hour trying to write something spooky and honestly I'm struggling. I don't know because <laughs> I get the idea that you've got to kind of to what creates fear to begin with is the fact that they kind of just say oh no like a, a creak is just a creak, it's not a ghost, it's an old house. They, they try and give logical reasons for what they're seeing and what they're hearing and what they're feeling. And I get that, I don't know. Basically I've just got her walking down a corridor, she's trying to find the bathroom. And as she's walking, the corridor seems longer than it should be. And she doesn't think much of it and then slowly she's like, no, this is taking too long. So she turns around Maybe she, and she thinks, oh, maybe I've just missed the room. So she'll turn back around, and that's when she starts hearing a second pair of footsteps. And she moves out the way, thinking, because these footsteps sound like they're running. So she moves out the way, so that she won't get hit by whatever's running her way. Not out of fear, just, yeah. But then the footsteps stop, and she hears nothing, and she thinks that it's just from above her. Then. She, then she finds out that she's been lent against the bathroom door that she's been looking for for what feels like ages. I wanted to create that kind of feeling, but how else do you, de how do you describe that? Do you call it out, being like, well, this is too long, this shouldn't be right? Do I write it off as, oh, it's just an old house, so of course the corridors are long, it's a mansion, of course it's long, it's just your imagination that it's this long. It's a new house, you just need to get used to it. What, what do I do? Perhaps I'm just not cut out to write horror. I'm going to carry on going, but it's annoying. I do know that obviously, again, it, this is the first I've ever written of it, so it could get better, it could get worse. <laughs> we'll see. So yeah, I struggled with describing things that are obviously all in your head, and in a film it's so much easier to dis explain. You don't need to, just show it. So that was a big hurdle for me to get over. Throughout that day as well, I also struggled with the concept of Laurie's past. Laurie's the main character, and I wasn't sure what kind of past I wanted to give her. I, I knew I wanted her to come from a dark past, a troubled past, but to what extent? Did I want her to be a spy sort of thing, or did I want her to be just an investigator, part of the police. I know that she's driven by revenge or the want to know, um, but also she's troubled with a guilt. I've decided to make Laurie bisexual throughout this and 
it adds to her guilt because Laurie has a past lover named Jessica who is dead and I'm hinting that she died in the same game that she's in now so there's the the need to know. She wants to know what Jessica went through. She feels like she blames herself for letting Jessica go there and letting Jessica die. But also there's an extra form of guilt with a new character called Adian. Adian is the basically the second main character in the story and he is the new love interest because these characters of all think they've got a week to live and with adult minds if you've got a week to live you're gonna most likely go for all the pleasures in the world you're going to try and get as many pleasures in the world into that one week which includes relationships and if you know you know my struggle here though is can a horror have underlining romance and you don't get to see that very much in films, they're already in a relationship, there's no relationship development, there's no, not very often anyway, there, there isn't a relationship forming, a romantic one at least. So I didn't quite know if I could do that, but as I wrote throughout the week, I feel like I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable with it because I've come up with other plans. At that point, I just kind of, ignored my doubt and just thought carry on writing and that's what I did until this happened luckily I caught it on camera but I'll let past me explain I've just lost all the work I did yesterday. <sighs> yep, that happened. I had to rewrite that whole section that I had been struggling with. Um, and it annoyed me because it put me back a day. And it still annoys me now knowing that. One of the biggest things that irritated me whilst rewriting was that I struggled to remember the exact way I'd written it before and it annoyed me knowing that there was a scenario that I'd already written and that I couldn't remember it as I rewrote this. It was just, what if that was the best one? It, ugh, it was so frustrating. But in the end, I was actually quite happy with where it came out. And yeah, it may not be like for like but i think i got the main parts in and added a few pieces that i didn't think of to begin with so the next day came about and i finally got over the fact that i'd uh, lost all my work and i got to basically continuing i had ranted and yelled and complained about it to Adam when he came back from work and I was just ready to carry on. At this point I was getting to the beef of the issue and it was get I was setting up the teams for the games. I don't know if I've stated already but my plan is to kind of set it up so that there's teams all pay taking part in this competition to win a prize and it just so happens that there's only ever one winner and that one winner is the only person who survives. So kind of like how it is in Would You Rather, but Would You Rather is based around killing each other. They're the people who are running this game say that they have no clue on why these people die and have nothing to do with why these people die. But yes, I was getting to naming the teams and I've decided to keep it to the nursery rhymes, fairy tale theme, so Red Riding Hood, Goldilocks, Humpty Dumpty, all those things. 
it was quite easy putting all the other characters into sections but then it came to my main character now my, re my main character Laurie she is a redhead and I wanted it to be part of a joke that you know she's put into Red Riding Hood because I feel like horrors have that kind of cliche and yeah we all roll our eyes at it but it's quite an accepted cliche um so I was at a bit of a dilemma because Red Riding Hood has four characters and what I did with the teams was how many characters are in the story is how many characters are in the group so God Locks and the Free Bears has four people yeah and Red Riding Hood technically has four Red Riding Hood, Woodsman, Nan, or Granny and the Wolf but I got to a point where I was like I could work a twist in here so I decided to just have three Red Riding Hood, The Woodsman and Granny because during the story, if you don't know the wolf dresses up like Granny so at one point those two characters merge into one because Granny has either been eaten or is locked in a cupboard somewhere it depends on which one you're watching or which one you're reading so I decided to only have three in that role then my next dilemma came about where I was like do I bring in a twist to the game the whole point of Laurie being there and the reward that Laurie is after is information the one thing she only wants to know is why and how Jessica died and what is the reason for this celebration that she's taken part in and the family know that so if she wins it's just because she's, she knows that's all she'll need so Laurie is a of the assumption that she's going to die anyway. I thought maybe a twist, bring in someone from the family that's running this whole competition and put them into Laurie's team. And I feel like having that character in there would create a massive bit of conflict. But also I feel like it would really take away from the feeling that I was creating in the story. So I went back and rethought, and I remembered I have a kind of creepy character. This creepy character I've been building up throughout it, he is a character that is going to take advantage of the situation he's in. You know, like how if there is a global catastrophe where there's always looters. He is that kind of person. He sees this as an opportunity to kill because that is something that he's always wanted to do and I hint that he isn't right in the head he's strange and he has put his, he has aimed his sights at Laurie so I feel like I've created this character that the house which is obviously doing the main haunting can work through and he is going to be the physical whilst the house is going to be the mental so I was stuck between having the creepy guy or a guy from the family to take part in her group and because I like to procrastinate and create problems for myself I decided I would do it tomorrow and think about it throughout the night to instead go and do some research. At that time in the week I was reading Nod. Nod is an amazing book and I recommend it for Halloween. It's basic it's based around the concept of what would happen if we had no sleep, which was ideal for me. No one in the world can sleep except for a select few. Yeah, the book follows him over 22 days. And by that time people have gone mad or they died because of sleep deprivation it's very interesting and the main character is oddly graphic and cynical anyway so it was it was quite a nice uh, read it, it was a couple of a day if that reading it but yeah that so I read that instead of writing which uh I don't regret it gave me some insights it gave me some insights of what I could do for characters and it helped a lot 
but also it, I only have a certain amount of weeks left I need to get writing so I decided to obviously read that and it helped and that was putting off writing until my next day off which was the following Sunday and then what did great what did I decide to do but go out the night before I really don't like to help myself at all I am my biggest problem because this was what I was like the following morning so it's Sunday so yeah um, I went out last night with some friends from work um, so I'm a little bit delicate this morning keeping a straight keeping a focused mind is kind of hard but I'm going to write today because I need to um, you know when you kind of look at the calendar and you think oh months really long and then you realize that you're basically halfway through the month and you're not halfway through your goal so I need to really pull my finger out um, yeah so today hopefully the hangover won't affect me too much oh bright I discussed my problem that I was having with the story when Adam got back the other day and came to a conclusion that I'm quite happy with so I'm writing that now um, hopefully I get some I get quite far in it today even with yeah <laughs> it wasn't a good idea I regret so yeah drink responsibly that's all I'm gonna say if we ignore the fact that I was hungover to be fair it was probably the best work I wrote so maybe there is a method to the madness I say in hopes that <laughs> I can talk myself off and be like yeah yeah it was fine but I think it was actually the most I'd written the most spooky stuff I'd written in the most understandable way I didn't doubt myself at all and it worked really well I felt my plans for the rest of the novel are still very much up in the air I am officially starting the competition and I've been hinting at these doors so I, I have some ideas but also I don't know I'm worried that it won't work like I have the basis of the idea but not a full picture and I know where I'll kind of want to go with it but I'm worried that it's more going to be an act it's going to go towards action rather than horror like the insidious series how it's not particularly scary it's more action Hollywood stunts rather than something literally following you and controlling you so I am a little bit worried that that won't work but that's basically it it's a I think like this video is going to be a very strange one because I have an really focused on filming I was trying to focus on the writing and I'm trying to find a balance here um, only two weeks left thanks for watching if you like what you're seeing leave a like and a comment down below don't forget to hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye